Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, to the We Are Change Sunday recap video where we go over all the important news that happened this week and also give you a friendly reminder that most fake news come from the government because a nation cannot solve what the press won't let it perceive. And that's why we do our videos. So in this video, we will be talking about the extremely volatile situation happening in Saudi Arabia with their greater push with Israel and the United States for a war with Lebanon. That was a mouthful. The TSA being totally incompetent while pushing for the AI supremacy dominance of human society. That might have been a little bit inaccurate, but, but you'll see. Tree huggers getting screwed by statist commies. Some actually good positive news and a lot more. And oh yeah, how one of the world's largest famine and starvation events is happening right now. You know, all the news that you're being misinformed about by the mainstream media or that they're completely ignoring. So let's get started. Started. And of course, I wanted to talk about the news that's not only going to affect the oil markets, the US petrodollar, the financial markets, but has all the hallmarks of another bloody idiotic war that may probably escalate to a bigger, grander global war. And of course, this all circulates around the crisis happening in Saudi Arabia right now that just went through a purge where many senior Saudi figures are saying that they're being tortured and beaten by the Saudi king as he consolidates power in the Saudi empire. This, of course, relates to a lot of news that we covered this week about the push for war by Saudi Arabia, as many publications like The Atlantic are following suit with our analysis and are now saying that the Middle East is nearing an explosion, which it is. And just like we reported this week about the rumors of the king actually stepping down in Saudi Arabia, we're now learning that the king of Saudi Arabia, who was behind this purge, said, hell no, which means we should expect the same kind of aggressive foreign policy that we have seen from him before continue now. Of course, creates a geopolitical tsunami that, of course, will have worldwide effect. And as we know, the Saudi Arabian empire is in decline. It is failing. And what they're doing right now, many people consider a desperate gamble with their push for a war with Lebanon and a greater push for a war with Iran. A very unstable geopolitical situation that of course should worry everyone with its grander implications. And of course there's a lot of disinformation surrounding the important developments around these events. As we learned last week where reportedly the Lebanese Prime Minister fled the country in fears of assassination for safeguard in Saudi Arabia, which Saudi Arabia used as a political lobbying tool to put pressure on Hezbollah and Iran inside of Lebanon. But now we're learning, according to Reuters, the Washington and Post and others that it was Saudi Arabia who kidnapped the Lebanese Prime Minister in order to escalate this potential conflict that is brewing between Hezbollah, Iran, Syria, and of course Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United States. Hezbollah responded recently by saying that Saudi Arabia has declared war on Lebanon and wants Israel to join them, with the Hezbollah leader saying on television that quote, I speak here about facts not analysis, Saudi Arabia is ready to pay tens of billions of dollars to Israel for that. And of course this week we also did find out from leaked diplomatic cables that Israel and Saudi Arabia were in communications together to escalate conflicts in the Middle East in cooperation with each other and working together to escalate geopolitical situations so it works out in both of their favors. Even though the two countries are supposed to be enemies with each other, we did see them work together supporting the rebel groups in Syria to try to overthrow the Syrian government and they both see Hezbollah and Iran as their main enemies. And that's why we're seeing both of these countries kind of escalate the push for war now just as their faction has lost the Syrian conflict and that's why today we're seeing Saudi Arabia request an urgent Arab League meeting over Iran right now just as they mobilize their F-15 fighter jets which by the way was given to them by the United States government in a mobilizing show of force as they mobilize more countries to be on their side against Iran and of course with tensions being so high as they are right now any minor event could be used as the justification for for escalation of force against each other and they're definitely looking for one as a reconnaissance drone was just shut down over the occupied Golan Heights region by Israeli forces who of course are looking for Hezbollah and Iranian links to that drone just a few hours ago there was a major pipeline explosion in Bahrain which their government of course blamed and pointed the finger on Iranian terrorists for doing that and of course with everyone on edge in the Middle East the situation is ripe for a fall flag and of course with everyone on edge in the Middle East it could just be one small event or even a false flag that could escalate the situations to very dangerous proportions and of course we're seeing strong rhetoric from all sides including Israel 
who just issued a statement that they would not let an Iranian base be built in Syria, as we're seeing Hezbollah and Iran become more dominant in Lebanon and Syria after their victory against ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the Syrian rebels. A victory that is almost complete and will allow them to have more influence right on Israel's border, which Israel is doing anything they could do to prevent. And that's why we're seeing this major clash point between Hezbollah, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Israel escalate throughout this week, which I don't see slowing down anytime soon and becoming more dangerous as time moves on which we will be following very closely because we're seeing a complete lack of coverage from the mainstream media about this big global event that will have global ramifications on everyone. And now in related news to the proxy war that has been happening between Iran and Saudi Arabia inside of Yemen, which we are seeing one of the world's biggest famine and starvation crisis unfold in that country right now as we are speaking. As the Saudi Arabian coalition, which by the way is also supported by the United States and the United Kingdom, recently shut down air, land, and sea routes into Yemen, which has created a situation where the UN and the Red Cross warned would be a catastrophic situation threatening the lives of millions of people who rely on life-saving aid deliveries into that country, including a shipment from the Red Cross that Saudi Arabia blocked of cholera tablets that are important to fighting the cholera epidemic in Yemen that is affecting more than 900,000 people. While the UN says that 7 million people in Yemen are on the brink of famine. Millions of people are on the brink of death because of the Saudi US UK Empire Coalition. And this should be the biggest story in the world right now but it's not, which should be indicative of the first point we made in the beginning of this video of how governments create fake news in order not to deal with the real issues happening in this world. Because months ago, we have seen the mainstream media go on and on and on about the humanitarian crisis in Syria since it fit the U.S. greater geopolitical war against the Syrian government, but yet won't dare talk about this humanitarian crisis at all. And while the American war on terror is destroying peace and prosperity all around the world while ignoring it, it also creates the duplicitous problem while creating more terrorists to fight in this big global war on terrorism, which we have been telling you now for years on this channel and has actually just been confirmed by the former president of Afghanistan, Karzai, who just came out moments ago and said that the U.S. colluded with ISIS in Afghanistan. Even U.S. veterans said that the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan created a terrorist producing factory that create more of the problems that the war on terror was supposed to stop. You know, just like the war on drugs. And now continuing on with more doomsday war news, we have a North Korean foreign minister coming out recently saying that, quote, Donald Trump during his visit laid bare his true nature as destroyer of world peace and stability and begged for a nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula, which Donald Trump eloquently responded on his Twitter by saying, quote, why would King Jong-un insult me by calling me old when I would never call him short and fat? Oh, well, I try so hard to be his friend and maybe someday that will happen. Uh, yeah. So that happened, which goes along with Henry Kissinger's chaos doctrine of American foreign policy being unpredictable, which it is now more than ever. And now in other news, with the war on terror creating more terrorism, we have to lose freedoms here in the United States, as the friendly TSA that likes to grope your buttocks and other private areas of your physical body to, you know, of course, protect you. That highly intelligent federal government security agency, that by the way, fails most tests, and around 80% of the times fails to actually do their job, has just announced that they plan to use facial recognition to track Americans in U.S. airports. You know, all in the name of safety and security, as we see an amassing surveillance states in the United States that is marching toward totalitarianism and leading towards a world with AI artificial intelligence supremacy that will most likely rule all over us in the next coming future. By the way, that is just my personal opinion. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Also this week, WikiLeaks revealed how the CIA was able to impersonate a Russian internet security firm as a major cover for its malware operations. And this week, we also learned that the founder of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, not only had key documents destroyed in his case by the UK authorities, but they also pressured Sweden not to interrogate Assange, the founder of WikiLeaks in the United Kingdom, doing their best to, of course, prolong his his internal detention inside of the Ecuadorian embassy in London, which has now been going on for over six years and costing taxpayers millions of pounds, all in the name of national security.
or really just shutting up a guy who wants transparency of what these national security agencies are actually doing. Which, of course, is lying to the public about what they're actually doing because they're not doing that. I, I digress. Moving forward, a bunch of tree-hugging hippies offered the Department of Natural Resources $150,000 to buy a portion of Indiana's Yellowstone State Park, which the Department of Natural Resources turned down, and they actually sold the forest to loggers for $40,000 less than what the tree-loving hippies actually offered. And that is just plain dumb, and I hope it drives the ANCAPs really mad. So if you know an ANCAP, definitely share this video with them. And moving on to some positive news, we are learning that the state of Illinois has actually eliminated the statues of limitations on child sex abuse. Something that is obviously common sense, especially since this week we found out that the LAPD stopped investigating the claims that Corey Feldman made because of statues of limitations that to me and now the state of Illinois shouldn't exist. And at least they don't exist now in Illinois. Also this week, Almost a million people clogged the streets of Barcelona demanding the release of political prisoners in their state. A huge mass of people came out in solidarity and a demonstration against the Spanish government, which of course was largely ignored and censored by the mainstream media once again. So that is the news that happened this week. If you know someone who's not privy to this information, send them this video. I'm looking forward to your comments in the section below. And of course, sincerely, thank you to all the people who go to We Are Changed forward slash donate and help make this broadcast possible with your donations because yet again if anyone else but the people were financing me i would probably not be able to talk about i wouldn't be able to talk about the issues that i'm talking about in this video yes we still get hit by the youtube police the general soft censorship on all the social media networks but it's okay and it will always be okay because there will be nothing stopping us especially with your support and that's why i love you guys thank you again so much for watching <laughs>